What's up guys? All right, so today I'll be working on the Boosted RSX here. Um, I actually went and took a photo shoot the other week and when I looked at the photos, I could tell that one side of my car was higher than the other. And I did not like that and it bugged me. So um, I don't know if you can tell right here, but my driver's side is higher than my passenger side just by a little bit. And it was just enough for me to notice in the pictures. And if I have time, I'll throw the picture in right now. But yeah, so one side's higher, if you can see in the picture, but uh, that's what we're doing today. So we'll be working on that. I'll show you how to properly preload a coilover and all that good stuff. And if I get parts in enough time, I'll work on the black one up there. Um, she still has an oil leak, if you follow my videos. Um, I posted a while back about her having an oil leak and it, I thought it was coming from one of the uh, oil control solenoids, but I'm not sure. It was seems like the timing cover, but then I found that there was a missing bolt in the timing cover and I put the bolt in there, so now it's not leaking uh, from that area, but I feel like it's leaking from one of the valve cover gasket, the rear side of it. So I will be, if that comes in enough time, I'll do that too. But today we're doing this, and before I go to the puller in the garage to work on it, I'd like to thank all y'all for subscribing. Uh, I reached a little over 500 subscribers. I thank all, all of y'all for uh, subscribing and watching my videos and uh, doing all that good stuff. So let me go ahead and pull her in. I just tried to car start my car with the wrong key. I have two RSXs and both keys are the same, so. <laughs> That's what she sounds like with the cold start. Uh, granted, it's not a cold, cold day today. It's maybe uh, low 60s, so it's not a completely cold, cold start, but the engine's cold. Didn't run her. She sat overnight, so that's how she sounds when she first fires up. But, yep, let me pull her in and get working on her. All right, I got her in the garage now. So this is what it looks like on this side. You see the ride height compared to the tire compared to the fender. And then this side, same thing. Ride height to the fender. And I was looking like I looked at this before and it actually looks like they're about the same. But if you go to I got a tape measure here. I'm gonna measure from the bottom of the ground to uh, the splitter, and then the ground to the splitter here, and just compare how like let me see here hold on compare the height difference on it because I know this side's higher so I'm gonna line it up in front of the fog light to the ground that one's roughly let's just call that three inches there and then I know there's cardboard here on the ground so in front of the fog light right here this is roughly Let's just say, since the cardboard, let's say three, three and three quarters. So we got three and three quarters on this side and just three on that side. So there's about three quarter difference, height difference, that this is higher than that side. Um, and when I was doing the finger test like this, it felt the same on this side as it did that side. So it looks about height wise from the fender compared to the tire on both sides, it looks the same. So what I'm thinking was, when I was looking around the car, you see here, I have a slight gap right here between my headlights and my bumper. And it's sagging just a little bit. So when I go to pick up on the, pick up on the bumper to close the gap, that gives me probably about almost half an inch higher on that. And then same thing, see this, this isn't that bad of a gap on this side. I think the reason that was, this car's been in, uh, front end collision well it wasn't that bad it was just like a little fender bender 
but it uh, messed up that headlight bracket and I had to re-weld uh, a new bracket to it so that's what I'm thinking is causing this part of the bumper to sag just a little bit just enough so you can barely see it like uh, on the picture or something like that but since since that I don't know if I want to lower this side now now that I look at it because they look like the same so I may or may not um, but I will I will take the wheel off and I'll tell y'all or show y'all how to properly preload the coilover and how to properly lower the car um, so let me go ahead and do that and then I'll decide if I want to lower this just a tad bit just to compensate but yeah so let me go ahead and jack carp and take the wheel off So I got the wheel, uh, the car jacked up, the wheel off. Now I'm looking at my coilover right here. Uh, the RSXs have the McPherson strut, and they have this crazy steering system where it attaches from the coilover right here. So every time you go to lower your car, it messes up your alignment. So on the RSX, because of that, every time you raise or lower your car, you need alignment. So when I'm when when I'm going to uh, lower this. I'm gonna have to get alignment. So I already have that in the works. So um, if I do lower this, I'm gonna get alignment anyway. So it don't matter there, but just for a side note, if any of you guys own RSX and you go to lower your car, you wanna get your uh, alignment done after that, just cause it throws it all out of whack. Um, another thing to note is I have the inverted tie rod ends and a lot of guys with the RSX and this type of uh, strut system and steering system, um, they run into problems getting an alignment when they slam the car and I'm kind of slammed. I'm not like super slammed, but You have problems uh, Towing your car out. So when you go to lower it um, It pulls it in one direction the, uh, the steering and you don't have enough threads on a stock steering uh, tie rod to tow it back out and one way to fix that is they make adjustable tie rod ends so you can adjust the tie rod length as you need it for how low you go and another one is the inverted tie rod ends which give you a little bit more instead of the tie rod being up here going down on it it comes below and goes up and that that gives you a little extra room so you can tow your car back out when you go to slam it um, so that's what i did instead of buying the actual tie rod adjustable tie rods but that's just a little side note for only the RSX guys that have RSX and that want to slam their car, you should be aware of that because I ran into problems. Um, so now, right now, I'm going to show you how to properly preload um, this coil over. Um, and well, before I do that, there's another side note I want to mention. This is the threaded coil over body. Um, and when you go to go lower an RSX, another problem you run into is this threaded body going digging into your axle boot. So I actually had the car a lot lower than what I have it right now and I encountered that problem and I was ripping boots like crazy. So I, I raised it up a little bit just so just enough so where it doesn't hit it. But that's just another thing that you run into when you go to lower RSXs. But enough of that. Um, let me get into showing you how to properly preload your coilover. Okay, sorry about all this uh, talking really, but I'm just gonna try to explain it to you the best I can. I'm not really gonna show you the preload part. Um, because I like where my preload's at. I don't want to mess with it right now, but I'll explain it to you By talking you through it. So you have your top collar and your bottom collar. This is your lock collar This is the collar that your coilover sits on. So to preload it uh, You want to start with zero preload and what that means is you back this off you back this the bottom the lock nut and the top nut You back it off and you back it off enough where you can move the coil over the spring right here for the coilover moves up and down just a little bit and then you use this top collar and you back it back onto the spring, just snug, not tight, just snug enough so that it doesn't move. And that's your zero preload. And then typically they recommend you um, leaving, once you got this one uh, snug up against this spring, you wanna bring this one back up, snugged up to this, not tight and just snug. And then from there, you wanna tighten this one 
to tighten the top lock of the spring to go up to compress the actual spring a little bit. And they say three to five millimeters, and that's which is also enough to stick like a wrench in between these two spanners. So that's how to properly preload your coilover is to um, back these off, have a little bit of play in the spring, go go tighten up the top uh, spanner here, just snug, not tight, snug against the spring so it don't move anymore. Then bring this bottom lock nut back up to that one and then tighten the top uh, spanner uh, up until you get three, uh, three to five millimeters between these two spanners here. So that means when you move this one, you're gonna spin this one uh, to tighten it and you're just gonna leave that one there. So this one will stay here while this is spinning and it's rising up to compress the spring. So you'll have three to five millimeters in between those two to adjust the preload. And that's how you properly, that's the proper way to adjust a preload for the coilover. Now, people always don't use that because um, you can actually get your car lower if you don't preload the car like that. So just to say, like, if I were to, if I wanted, this is as low as I could go with the preload like this. I could go a little bit lower by adjusting the preload to go down. So it would be a lot of play between the spring, but it also lower the car. And it's not good because there's too much play between the springs. So when you hit a bump or something like that, your car would be bouncing up and down and your actual piston inside your coilover will be traveling more than it should. So that's how you properly adjust the preload. And yeah, so that's the preload. And then to actually lower the car, you'll back this, uh, this lock spanner here for the bottom of the coilover. You'll, you'll loosen this and then you'll twist the whole body so you don't want to adjust these two again because that's your preload. You just want to twist the whole body of it. So when, so the whole coilover will spin and it'll screw down into the actual strut here. So that's how you actually properly lower the car because if you adjust this, you're messing with your preload again. You don't want to do that. So once you set your preload, then you can adjust your uh, the height of the car. So with that being said, I think I am going to lower this just a tad bit. Not too much, but just a little bit. So I'll, t I'll show you how to uh, just lower lower the car. So let me do that. All right, so I showed you how to properly adjust your preload of your coilover and then how to properly lower your car. So we got that done. I did, as you saw, I did lower up just a tad bit. I just compensated. I didn't lower it all the way so it'd be even. I just lowered it just a little bit so it would be not as noticeable. I'm just going to have to deal with this side being just a tad bit higher than this side all because I believe of this here. There's a small gap and this sags the bumper just a little bit, just enough to make it uneven. But that's what I'm gonna have to live with until I go back and like look at the actual headlight bracket and maybe I could re-weld it or something like that. But anyway, that's how you do the car. That's how you do set your preload. That's how you properly lower your car. So with that, I want to wash the car right now, but I'm not sure. It looks a little cloudy outside. I don't know if you can tell it's overcast so I don't want to wash the car and then it rains but I think I, mil I might still wash the car and I still haven't got the part yet for the or the valve cover gasket for that for the other RSX so I probably won't be doing that today but I'm gonna get this done and yep so showed you that let's see if I can wash the car and we'll go from there <music>
All right, guys. Thank you for watching this video. That's all I got for today. Um, thank you again for 500 subscribers. Thank you all. And if you enjoyed this video, leave me a like. Um, and if you haven't subscribed yet, go ahead and subscribe.